grade 8, it's your teacher. I hope you are doing well on your little lockdown. Um, right, so we're just gonna continue from where we left off last time. So, after I saw you previously, we discussed the um, reasons for the mineral revolution, why it began, um, how it led to um, people starting to take over areas where areas became industrialized. We used the example of Johannesburg. Um, oh, this is something I didn't do in the previous video, which I should have. Um, so activity one, matching concepts, I have uploaded it to the D6. So the idea is you were supposed to have done that um, in the previous video. The answers for it is over there. Um, you can just have a look at that for about a few seconds and then I'll go to the next one. Alright, so we discussed why the Industrial Revolution happened because of the Mineral Revolution. We spoke about the discovery of diamonds in Kimberley and the discovery of gold in the Witwatersrand. And we spoke about how that discovery laid the foundations of racism. Um, so we did a few did you know Johannesburg being Igorli, city of gold. Uh, then we did a comparison activity where we compared Johannesburg in 1886 to Johannesburg in 1906. Uh, just going to skip that. Um, and then we spoke about how it led to an increase in the demand for migrant laborers. So here I think I should actually go into what a migrant laborer is again, just in case you guys have forgotten from the last time. A migrant laborer is someone who comes from far away to come and work in a different area. Why would people use migrant laborers? They are generally cheaper than using people from the own area. So mainly in South Africa, migrant laborers were black African people and they chose to work for cash because they wanted to buy guns and they wanted to buy farming equipment and they wanted money for la bola, the bride price. Right, so today we're going to be talking about the compound system. Um, basically how mine owners um, basically started treating the black mine workers so let's get into that okay now many of you will remember that the black mine workers who worked in the mines in Kimberley and then later in the Witwatersrand um, they were migrant laborers so they came from far away to come and work on the mines in Kimberley um, and the mine owners needed some way to put these workers because there were literally thousands of them. So what they did is they built something called a compound. Um, it's also sometimes called a closed compound. And basically, um, black workers were housed separately from white workers. Um, the conditions in the compounds were very bad and it was also very restrictive. So um, many workers died of pneumonia, there was not enough food, and there was not enough warm shelter. So I'm going to show you an image of a compound. Just give me a moment to get that ready for you. So over here we have an image of the conditions in the compound. You can see that they are not properly fed, there's no proper place to eat. You kind of have to sit in your little section and eat out of this bowl. Uh, the food was very bad as well. You can see that they had to do their washing um, and hang it up in the small little space that they had. And you can see that the space that they had doesn't look very comfortable. Uh, you can also see here, this is a different image of a compound. People are laying in bunk beds. Once again, not very comfortable, not very um, freeing. Uh, it's really not a very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not decent accommodation for humans. It's Basically, it was just built to keep the, as a place to keep the workers while they were working on the mines. Um, in the next image I'm going to show you, this is how the compound looks. Um, the reason it was called a closed compound is because people were not allowed to 
leave the compound. So the only reason you would have to leave the compound would be to go to work on the mines and then you'd have to come back into the compound after your work day was completed. So there was not a lot of freedom, it was very restricted, and the way the people were treated was not very good. Many people got sick and some people even um, really experienced very bad conditions. So by 1885, large mining companies decided to use the closed compound system. Black workers were kept confined during their three to six month contracts, meaning no going in, no going out. Company owners realized that improving living conditions led to increased productivity and increasing the amount of control over workers stopped illicit diamond buying. So what would happen with the normal compound system is that people would try to smuggle diamonds out. So they would mine things and then because they were given the freedom to move, many of them would then kind of smuggle those diamonds out and make some money for themselves on the side. So the closed compound system led to increased productivity and it led to the stop or the at least the decrease of illicit diamond buying. Sorry, I'm having a bit of difficulty going to the next slide. Just give me a moment. So illicit diamond buying could be controlled if workers were not allowed to leave and workers were only searched once at the end of their contract instead of at the end of every search of every shift, uh, shift sorry. So basically with the normal compound system at the end of each shift they had to search if anyone was trying to smuggle diamonds out whereas with the closed compound system um, you only really had to search at the end because nobody was really allowed to leave the compound. So some workers swallowed diamonds to swallow them out. So this is just a, did you know some interesting facts. Um, they had to remain a further eight days on the compound and were fed a laxative to make their stomachs work. So some people tried to figure out ways and means around this whole closed compound system. Um, and this was one of them. It's quite funny, actually. Um, so they had to wear thick gloves so they could not swallow a diamond a second time. And here we go. This is a source. Um, so what's going to happen in the exam, I'm going to give you something like this, where you are going to have to analyze the source. So the first thing you need to do is you need to read the caption. The caption is the part of the source over here. It tells you what the source is going to be about. So source C is a description of the conditions in the closed compounds. You'll see it's adapted from in Parsons. So this is where I got the information from. That will tell you if this work can be trusted or not. So it's from a new history of Southern Africa, which tells me it's probably from a textbook or a history book. And you can see it was published in 1982, which means it was actually published during the apartheid years. So we have to be aware of that. And it's from page 150. So let's read the actual source now and see what can we figure out from this uh, source about closed compounds. They say that black miners were restricted to closed compounds. Workers were locked up in the new compounds without their families for between three and six months, surrounded by metal and wire fencing. When workers left the closed compounds, they were kept naked in solitary confinement. So the word in brackets tells me what solitary confinement means and that word says alone. So they were kept naked alone with their hands locked in a sort of boxing glove until they had excreted all that they had swallowed in the compound. So what does this source tell me about living in the compounds. Firstly, we can see that only black miners were restricted to the closed compounds. Then we can see they were locked without their families, so it leads to the breakdown of the family structure. Just imagine for a moment how it would be if the person that looked after you was sent away for between three and six months and you just didn't see them for that time and they could not really contact you for that time. It will lead to the breakdown of the family structure. Um, you can see that they were surrounded by metal and wire fencing. So 
it doesn't really feel like a home it feels like a prison sort of because it's surrounded by this metal and wire fencing to keep you in um, you can see that their human dignity was violated. They were kept naked in solitary confinement. They were kept alone. They didn't have anyone to talk to. Um, and their hands were locked in a boxing glove. Um, and they had to stay like that until they uh, excreted anything that they had swallowed in the compound. And all of this was just to stop the illicit diamond buying trade. So it actually shows that humans were not valued as much as the diamonds were. Uh, so here's a different source. This is source D, which has a different description of the conditions in the closed compounds. You can see that it's adapted from D. Van Zyl, The Discovery of Wealth in 1986. So this is also in the apartheid years. And this is what they say. For most workers, the compounds offered great advantage. Here they received proper housing. They were well fed. They could buy items such as blankets, shoes and clothing at fair prices, receive proper treatment if they were ill, and were given lessons in reading and writing in their leisure hours. Huh? That's very much different from what we saw in the previous uh, slide. So we need to, as historians, account for these differences. Why do you think these descriptions are so different? Um, from this description, it sounds like the closed compounds were a beautiful place. It provided housing, people were fed, they could buy blankets, shoes and clothing and the prices were fair. They received treatment if they were ill, they were given lessons in reading and writing. How do we know what's right? Why, how, how do we know what's the truth? So that's our jobs as historians. We need to examine both sources and we need to try and figure out what is the truth. Um, just because something has a different perspective doesn't mean it's wrong. Uh, but we need to compare it to other sources to see do these things agree with each other so that we can try and figure out what is the truth? You know the old saying, there's three sides to the story, your side, my side, and the truth. So let's have a look at activity three. This will be your homework for today. So what you need to do is you need to analyze sources. So question one, you must explain what the term closed compound means. Very easy, it is in your glossary, so you can refer back to that video to help you. Question two, use source C. That tells me that the answer to the question will appear in source C. So let's have a look at 2.1. Does the author have a positive or a negative view of the closed compounds? So you need to then decide, is the view a good view or is the bad view? And then 2.2, explain your answer using evidence from the source. When you see this phrase, using evidence from the source, you need to quote. You need to take something out of the source that supports your answer in the previous question. Then study source D. Does the author have a positive or negative view? So you can see the answer, the question is exactly the same, but obviously your answer, if it was positive here, it would be negative there. Uh, I'm giving it away, but I'm also, it's not the correct answer, the one that I just said now. Um, a view of the closed compounds, and then 3.2, explain your answer using evidence from the source. So once again, you need to go to the source and you need to find words that tell you this person has either a positive or negative view of the closed compounds and then what you need to do the last question use all the sources so use the positive sources and the negative sources to describe how living conditions were like in the compounds so just to give you guys a bit of guidance um, I would say write about five lines on that uh, mention about five things maybe you can mention three good things and two bad things or three bad things and two good things um, and what you need to focus on is the living conditions, okay? So thank you for tuning in. I will see you next time. Please be reminded that your homework is Activity 3, Analyzing Sources. If you need to go back and um, pause the video, you can pause it at any time. And you can always refer back to what I have said if you feel like you are lost. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Uh,